Welcome to another episode of the Mojo Hour Show. I'm Pamela Sullivan, the Mojo Maker, and I'm your host today, and I welcome you and thank you for joining me yet again. Ladies and gentlemen, I know how difficult it can sometimes be to show up on a Saturday afternoon, especially as the seasons are changing in the way that they are. So thank you for joining me. And it's going to be a special day and for a few reasons, and I'll point them out as we go. You know, we are human beings and we have this amazing capacity to see and to hear and to talk, but sometimes life goes by us and we don't see everything around us. So I'm challenging you today here. For those of you that have visited me over the last few weeks and months, you probably have noticed something a bit different in my environment and my surroundings. And it was intentionally done. If you look behind me, the artwork has changed. And I want to give a shout out to the prolific abstract artist that also happens to live in my neighborhood, Carolyn Sadowska. She she has blessed me with changing up my background because I feel it's important, especially as the light changes, is to have some beautiful work. And you have to visit her website. She has blessed me with allowing me to come and visit her studio. And I was absolutely blown away by what I encountered there. So I'm asking each of you to go visit her and just just peruse, just see what's going on there. And I'm gonna keep changing. She's gonna bring some more things in to change up the background and come back and see what you can see. I'll, which way do I go? There's that one over the fireplace over there. And then there are the two on the side on the wall here. And if you're really sharp, you're going to notice that my brooch, which is my spiral up, you know, I always say spiral up, is almost reminiscent about what you're seeing over there. So there's just stories everywhere. So Carolyn, again, Thank you for honoring me with your energy and your work. So that was my find of the week, guys. And we're going to keep show showcasing different things like that. And I also want to point you to the incredible Mother's Day giveaway that is now in effect. The draw goes until May 7th and the winner will be announced May 8th. And the winner, oh my goodness, the winner is walking away with a plethora of beautiful gifts. And I want to thank those that also participated, the vendors that participating in that particular draw. So you have to visit the uh, the landing page at PamelaSullivan.com slash giveaway to see all those prizes. And for those of you that are live here today, you have an opportunity to, learn, uh, to earn ballots. All you have to do is write your name down in the chat so I can give you ballots. Two ballots are showing up. If you brought a friend, the friend gets a ballot, you get three ballots, ballots for everybody. But I want somebody to walk away with that basket. So don't forget to put your name down there and we'll get you in. All right, so let's talk about today's topic. Today's topic is remarkable women who lead. And I thought that it was important to talk about this. As you know, I'm a mentor. I work with women who are spiraling up into higher and higher heights. And I consider them to be remarkable. I am blessed and honored to be working with such energies out there. They are just sparks that light up the room when they walk in. And I wanted to I wanted to talk about such women because I feel that more and more women really need to step into the arena. So I consider myself, I boldly consider myself to be someone that unshackles remarkable women. So these women can go out there and do their thing. But first, let's talk about the word remarkable. What is remarkable? And you can throw things down in the chat if you wish. I'm going to lower my light a little bit. You can throw things down in the chat if you wish about that. Whoops, it's going up even higher. There it is. Um, what is remarkable? What do you think the word remarkable means to you when you when you hear it? To me, and I think I actually even have it written down, and I'll read it to you. Worthy of being or likely to be noticed, especially as being uncommon or extraordinary or extraordinary. All right. Yes, Wendy, you're right. Remarkable is the artwork behind you. I'm going to move over. See that? <laughs> Carolyn, you're ahead. Um, but the remarkable people around you, they bring essence and beauty to life, do they not? They, they light up the space. It's almost the air turns crackly when they walk in. And, and why is that? Now, I, I don't want to talk about why just yet. I want to talk about what it means for these people when they're in leadership positions. And I talked about a five frame network that I specifically mentor and coach to these women that I have in my space in the time that we work with. So let's hit on them because you know how quickly 
the time goes when we're here on a Saturday, right? We have 30 minutes, but stay for the after show after I take off the recording because that's when the real cool stuff actually happens sometimes too. So if you are hearing me in the replay, come the next time and let's have a good time in the after show, okay? So let's talk about what it means to be a remarkable woman who leads. I have five things I talk about. One is meaning. This, and I'll talk about, I'll name them off so we don't miss anything. And then I'll go back and talk to each one a little bit, okay? So the first one is meaning, the type of meaning and purpose they bring to their lives and to whatever it is they put their hands to. The second thing is framing. And I'm not gonna go into framing just yet, but think about that word, framing. Almost apropos as we're talking, we've got art, spunky art in the word, right? <laughs> the next one is connecting. And I think we all have our own thoughts about what it means to, be, to connect, engaging and then energizing. What are these five pieces? What is Pamela talking about specifically when she's talking about this five, five point framework? Well, let's dive in. Meaning, we see so many people around us and hopefully not us, but around us that are moving through their lives in space without any meaning to their lives. And you know when somebody has meaning. You see them in that space and whatever they put their hand to, it just sort of becomes something that's very uplifting and almost magical to a certain point. A lot of people go through things meaninglessly. Now, you might have heard a gentleman, an influencer and a teacher up there, his name is Simon Sinek. And Simon's big breakout moment is when he introduced the concept of bringing out your big why. Why do you do the things that you do? It's not something that you specifically ask yourself on a, any given basis in time, but when you ask the why, it changes the trajectory of your life. Most people are doing things and they have absolutely no reason to be doing it. They, there's no meaning for it. It's just something that they're, they're patterning because they've seen somebody else do it, doing it, probably somebody in their family or a good friend or someone told them that's what they should be doing, but there's no real reason for them to do it. I have a really cute story about that. Um, a little girl saw her mother at, during Christmas season preparing the ham for Christmas dinner and then saw her mother cut off the end piece of the ham and put it in the, pot, the pan before she put it in the oven. And she asked her mother, why do you cut off the end of the ham? I see you doing it year after year. And the ma, her mother said, well, my mother did that, right? That's how we make our ham, we prepare our ham. So the next time the little girl saw her grandmother, she asked the grandmother, Granny, why do you cut off? the end of the ham. I saw mom doing it and she said, you do it. So I really want to know why you cut off the ham, the end of the ham. She says, because my pot, my pan's too small and it's the only way it would fit, right? So what is your reason for doing the things that you do? What's the meaning that you give it? Have you given it the meaning that's important for you to get the job done? Or have are you simply parroting what you've seen other people do? And unfortunately, that's the way that we learn and that's how we continue on our lives, our family showed us what to do and we didn't even question, we weren't even curious enough to find out if it was the thing to continue doing or if it was the good, a good thing for us to keep doing. So what is the meaning for your life? Because meaning is so important. It's, it's the secret sauce, I would call it. It's the reason that you get out of bed. It's the reason that you turn your job or how you turn your job or into a calling. You know, one of my favorite lines came from a Martin Luther King um, essay. This, I, 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 I studied this in University and Humanities and I'll never forget that line and he said, no matter what life gives you to do, if you are a floor sweeper, be the best floor sweeper that this planet has ever seen. And I thought about that because, you know, we're all trying to strive for the big titles and the big cash and, and, and all these, you know, the, the, the public endure and all of these things. But what if all you were given to do in life was to sweep floors? He said, be the best one possible. Be so good that they have to find you across the country and fly you in to sweep this floor because no one can do it like you. And I think a lot of us don't put that energy into the things that we do the way we should because we don't think it's, it's important enough or it's not sexy enough or it's not glamorous enough. If it's for you to do, it was given for you to do. If you can see it like that, if you have the eyes to see it that way. Most people do a haphazard jobs, job of things because eh, who cares why it's not important? Well, you know what? They're right. It's not important to them. And unfortunately they're missing an opportunity to really ratchet up the energy 
that they could sort of bring the service and the love and the power to other people. Don't you just love it when you see people in service positions, either in restaurants or wherever you may find them, and you know they're giving their all to that moment. They're giving all to you that they've got. And they're and to it, to us, we oh, they're just in a service job. It's nothing important. But you know what? It is important because in that moment, as I'm at that table dining, it's an important moment for me. I'm eating food. I'm having a moment. I'm, I'm doing whatever it is. And that person is going above and beyond to make sure and ensure that I'm feeling the best that I can feel in that moment. So I tip well in those moments because you know what? Not all waiters and waitresses do that. And you know that you've had very bad service at places. So meaning, with meaning, you can turn your job into a calling. Okay, think about that. Think about that the next time you put your hand to something and watch how other people do their jobs. Is it just a job or is it a calling? So anything you do, give it the meaning that you need to have in order so you will spiral up and that energy then flows out to other people. All right, so let's just leave it there for now because I think you understand what I mean by purpose. Have a strong why and place your energy, your love into the thing that you're given to do. And that's how you move up in life, by the way. Because when I have people working with me, I watch what they do. I watch the energy that they bring. And I may not say anything to them because I'm not their mother or their father, but I just won't call them back. I won't give them my business anymore. In my mind, they don't want my money, right? So don't have anybody think that about you. Whatever you're given to do, do it with everything that you have in your body and soul, okay? The next thing is framing. Now, what do I mean by framing? Remarkable women who lead have the ability to frame things, something negative happens to them. They don't fly off the handle and they pick up the phone and they start on loading that energy on other people. They take a moment, they breathe, and they ask themselves inquisitive questions because remarkable women who lead are curious people. They want to know if they saw the situation correctly. Did, in fact, did that person do what you think you saw them do or said what you heard them say? take a minute and try and come up with an answer. Are you receiving the information in the way that you think they sent it your way? Sometimes based on our mindset, we skewer things because of how fixed our minds are on certain things. Oh, everybody hates me. Uh, you know, this person rejected me, this person no, because they hate me. Well, maybe they, they couldn't afford you at that time. Maybe they don't have time. Maybe they're ill. Maybe they're rushing off to something else. You don't know everything that's going on around you. So jumping to conclusions is a way that most people land in trouble because they don't understand the entirety of what's happening around them. And they also keep themselves from rising up because they think they, they, they bring down, or I should say they spiral down their energy that puts a clamp on their ability to get things done because they're wallowing now, they're ruminating over what they believe has just happened. And because they weren't curious enough or brave enough, to go ask a question about what happened or to clarify what they thought happened, nothing is resolved. They can making up story after story after story after story about the situation, making it bigger and bringing in other people. <laughs> They're bringing in a team but to be part of that story only to find out down the road that it wasn't like that at all. The person either don't, doesn't even remember that it happened or they weren't thinking when it happened, it had nothing to do with you, but you took it in a way that blew it out of control. Do you not understand how much energy that takes from you and from the other people involved? Remarkable women that lead don't go there. They take time away. They might say, you know what, let me step back for a minute and maybe ask a question, or maybe I'm going to go have a, a walk or a swim or a beer, or whatever they need to do to just lay the thing down and come back at it and with a different set of eyes, a different set of ears, a different thought about it, because we do that to ourselves. We are our own worst enemy based on how we set things up in our brain. I was a terrible ruminator for a long portion of my life until I learned to practice to stop and stop judging what I thought I saw or what I thought I heard. A lot of the time, I ended up being incorrect about the situation because I didn't have the eyes or ears or the full complexity of the situation at that time because we never know everything that's going on it's like watching you know for those of us that used to watch 
soap operas or any of the, the shows that are on TV, we, as the audience, we get to see everything. We get to see all the positions being played, all the conversations had. And when somebody walks into the room, we're thinking, ooh, they're going to get floored by this person or someone's going to shoot there because we see all the positions being played. Unfortunately, in reality, we have no idea what's happening outside of our awareness. When we can't see other people, we can't hear other people, we don't know what they're doing, right? So you can't make judgments on things you have no knowledge of, yet we're so quick to fly in there. This is an opportunity to consider framing, framing how you want this thing to unfold, framing how you want to resolve the situation, all right? Who do you wanna be in this? How, does, how is this coming out for you or should come out for you, okay? Framing, to me, this is the number one ingredient for remarkable women who lead, the ability to stop and reframe. So if something happens to you, is it because the whole world hates you? <laughs> or is it something totally else going on? And the only way you're going to know is to stop and ask a question. It takes courage to do it because we don't wanna be confrontational. We don't wanna have those uncomfortable conversations now, do we? But if you're going to be a remarkable woman in a leadership position, and I'm not talking about just leadership positions in your career or in the boardroom or the C-suite, a leadership position within your home and your family, a leadership position with your partner, a leadership position with your friends. I mean, we all switch up who has the spotlight at any given moment, but at all times, you're a leader for yourself. Correct? All right. So consider that. Consider framing. Consider stopping for a moment, breathing, and considering all the parties and situations involved before you run off with a long story for all these other people that have nothing to do with it. Okay? The third thing is connecting and bringing in that strong sense of belonging. Something else that I personally have struggled with all my life is trying to find my people, my tribe, not culturally speaking, but those that I felt were tracking along in the same way, either, either through the thoughts that they think, you know, we talk about hanging out with like-minded people. Well, well, basically that sort of thing. Um, and remarkable women, when they can find it, <laughs> I'm going to sort of put myself in here because I've always had this struggle. When I can't find it, I create it. I create the environment in which I wish to be and thrive because not everybody is willing to track the way that you do, especially if you have a vision, especially if you have goals. And you know this, the minute you say you want to do something, everybody starts to get uncomfortable, usually family, because they don't understand what you're trying to do. And maybe some close friends, again, because they don't understand what you're trying to say or do. And it's not something that they might be familiar with. So it causes a little bit of a ripple effect when you start sharing your dreams and visions with other people. So you go off into the far country to find other people who are like you. So all of a sudden you end up in a sort of desert or wilderness situation because it's lonely out there when you have to detach from those that don't understand what you're doing or who you have become because you're always becoming, right? So when you change, there are a whole slew of people that you're leaving behind energetically anyway, if not physically, and then who's left, who's there, then you have to take the journey, as we call it, while you're doing the work, the energy inner work, until the new set of people begin to show up, and it could be a long time before they do, so there's this whole period of feeling disconnected, and what we long for as humans is connection, we want to have that strong sense of belonging, well, again, whether it's in our families, whether it's amongst our peers at work or everything else in between, especially if you're an entrepreneur and you're working alone, it's very difficult to connect to other groups of women. So I'm always creating the environments in which I can thrive. And then looking, going through a lot of people until I can find them. And I was blown away in the beginning of this journey because I thought, oh, they'd be everywhere. No, they're not. They're very few and far between. So discernment, remarkable women who lead are very discerning about the people that they have around them. And they create the environments in which they wish to thrive. And that includes your home, ladies and gentlemen, right? Because this is a place in which you, you put yourself, your body at night sleeps here. So make it as beautiful as you possibly can. And if you need something to make it beautiful, there's always Carolyn's arch, right? <laughs> so all I'm saying is we have a have a conscious thought about the, the environments in which you place yourself 
or the environments in which you create and the people and the energies that you bring into those places. Remarkable women have an eye on this. They don't just throw themselves anywhere, right? Something I had to learn too. I have to be very discerning. It's not being, you know, you're, it's not being exclusive. It, I would say it's a little bit exclusive, but not in a way that you might think. We have to remember our energy is sacred. And you can't be leaking it everywhere, trying to fit in. Belonging and fitting in are two separate processes. Belonging, sometimes you know you belong in a situation, you might even fight it because you think you want to go over there and be over there. Where fitting in, you contort and morph yourself to try and fit somewhere in which you have no business being. It's a whole different process and feeling, and you know when you're doing it to yourself. So keep an eye out for that place of belonging, not necessarily the place you need to fit in. All right, so let's move on to engaging. My favorite topic, really, it is. I have, and I'm going to shout out to my friend Winnie, who's on this call today. Winnie has this huge way of engaging everybody she sees. At first, I thought, like, who is this person, right? Always saying hello to people, and she's just always there. Um, but to me, I watched her. She was a great teacher. She showed me how to to engage life, engage other people. I was, I was very, you know, retiring, very stoic. I mean, you know, you look at me sometimes, I have a friend that says, oh my gosh, you've always got that sort of look on your face. Like you're always judging people and, and not at all. I, I just like to look and witness and check things out. But with Winnie, I'm, and I'm Winnie, I hope you don't mind me calling you out like this because, because you're such an engaging person. I know you can take it. You've got big shoulders. So, <laughs> but she showed me how to, to just expand and engage what was going on in the moment. And it's such a, it's such a powerful way to live your life. And, and remarkable women who lead have a very open and engaging way about them, okay? This is about being able to share yourself with people. You don't have to give away your innermost thoughts and feelings, but at least be approachable. Remarkable women have this way about them that they you can feel the love coming from them right? They protect themselves, they protect their energy, but they're not closed off, right? So thank you, Winnie, for showing me how to do that. That was, that was awesome. Um, the other thing about this is find out through a really good person in your life how to engage. I had to learn to stop saying no every time somebody asked me something. <laughs> I was the no girl. Pam, you want to do this? Pam, you want to go there? But no, 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 no. I might change my mind, but my first response was always no. And I had to learn that I had to be open to hear that. Not everybody likes feedback. I get that. But you have to be open enough to receive it. Check it out with yourself. Is it something that's true for you? And if it is, are you willing to do something about it? And I was. So I don't say no every time, just sometimes now. <laughs> so the next thing here is about energizing. And I'm all about the energy. I would call myself an energy worker, even in the role that I play as a mentor to women. It's about how do I open them up to their energy? I call it mojo. How do I get their mojo spiraling up? As cerebral and as academic as we think ourselves to be, there's something else at play here. And it's how we connect to that power and that source that will allow us to be remarkable, to be extraordinary or extraordinary or memorable or fascinating. And when these people walk into the room, you can't even, you don't even know what it is about them. You just feel it, don't you? And you want to be closer to them. You want to engage them in conversation. So remarkable women are very cognizant of the energy of their presence. They're cognizant of the presence they exude. They are cognizant of the presence working within. And I work on the inside and outside with women to make sure both those things are moving in the way that they need to be moving so that they can be effective for their people, okay? So I, I'm, I'm just gonna start winding this conversation down because this is really deep stuff. This is the work that I do. This is the place in which I play, but I wanna read off a listing of things about remarkable women, just so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. And I'll go through really quickly. I've only got a couple of minutes here. Remarkable women are curious and optimistic. They know themselves and they understand their, the stories of their lives. They have a strong sense of purpose. They show up and they speak up. Don't you just hate it when you leave a situation or a meeting and, you, and you're mad because you didn't say what you wanted to say? Remarkable people, people that are sure of themselves, speak up. 
Um, they tend to make a difference for the people around them. Are you one of those people? Do you leave things in people better than you found them? Remarkable people do. They view life as an adventure. So they go out there looking for things to happen, looking for wonderful things. When I get up in the morning, my new mantra is, okay, day, okay, life, what wonderful things are you going to show me today? And I look for it. And they're everywhere. They dream big. I remember I got a bad review on a job once. They said, I, I think too big. <laughs> um, remarkable women are cool under fire. So if things are falling apart, you know, there's, you know, there's all kinds of chaos happening. They, they are stand for within themselves. They are the ones people seek out when everything else is falling apart because they are cool under fire. They are adaptable. Okay. What? I don't have an umbrella. I'll figure it out. <laughs> they don't hide from situations. They don't go into passive aggressiveness. They handle things as they come up as they should. It's not being confrontational. All right. They mentor and sponsor people. They look for opportunities to help people to rise, either through counseling them or through introducing them to people that can help them get what they need to get. All right. And I do a huge teaching on this one. This is just epic. Um, they have a beautiful mindset. It's not that they're always happy and Pollyanna-ish, but they don't always look for the negative and the darkness of life because life is not that. Some dark things do happen, but that's not our natural being. Okay. Um, they are incredibly prepared. Another thing I do with my women, if Oprah comes knocking for any one of them tomorrow, they're ready to go. All right. They have their stuff together. They stand up to be counted. I don't have to explain that one. They have a strong personal style and brand. Another thing I do with them. Anytime anybody sees you, they know, they know what you're about. They don't have to try and figure it out. When I, I show up online, they know it's Pamela stuff, the Mojo Maker, just by the colors I'm using, just how I, I say things, the voice that I use. I'm a truth teller. Not always the most welcoming person in the room because it's like, oh, she's going to say not to be malicious, just to be real. Um, they don't have excuses. Okay, that's a big one for women. For instance, if I asked you, if you could be the best, it be the best shape of your life, tell me what's standing in the way. Oh, and they'd stand, they'd have a whole bunch of things as to why, as opposed to, I'm just not ready, don't want it, don't feel like it. All right, so just to be honest with yourself first, remarkable women have a way presenting the truth to themselves okay so i'm winding down oh my gosh i don't even have time for the for the um for the uh hot mojo tip this week there was just so much remarkable things to say but i hope you understand what it is that we were talking about to hear here today and as a remarkable woman yourself continue to dive in and to to admit what you need to ensure that you're getting what you need and your audience is getting what you need to continue to spiral up I'll see you again next week. Have a good one.